Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain Rizia, a choose-your-own-adventure role-playing political game where you are in charge of a monarchy in a fictional 1950s country that feels loosely based on Iran um, and a couple other countries as well. With that being said, this is episode number 16 of our Let's Play series in this game, and we're on the brink of war. In fact, today's episode is going to start off with us declaring war on Pales, a country to our south. We have have historical claims on this country. We've been at peace with them for 20 years after a failed invasion that our father helped lead. And that's the situation, basically. There was a gas field that was discovered off the coast that we claimed we had 50% share in. The international community ruled against us. The Pelagians sent a naval fleet to break up our blockade of the area that was sort of put in force to make sure that they didn't start drilling before the Court of Arbitration made its ruling. And um, they, their ships collided with ours, and there's been an incident there. One of our ships suffered many casualties, and uh, we did shoot the first shots, but they rammed us. So that's the situation... And I guess, you know, war will be the final arbiter of this situation. We'll see if we're able to win it. And, uh, yeah, let's just, no further ado, let's just jump on in. The faint murmur of the crowd outside step seeped into the room, its restlessness contrasting with the stillness inside. The walls of the solemn chamber inside Palace Resna were adorned with dignified portraits of my ancestors, King Valero, Queen Liza, and the long lineage of House Torres stretching back to its inception. Uncle Hugo peered out toward the balcony, then turned to me, his face ex an expression, or his expression a mix of resolve and solemnity. Romus, as you stand before our kingdom today, remember that history is written by the victors. Those with true courage face to face the tempest of uncertainty and survive will echo throughout history. You speak true, Uncle. Two and a half million people have gathered outside, flooding the city streets of Port Drezon. Our entire police force is deployed for their safety. The Golden Guard has been deployed with its entire division, ensuring the city center is a safe zone. The air is tense, reminiscent of the days before battle, yet there is an undeniable resolve among our people. The past memories are resurfacing. The 1923 war and the 1926 revolt was just like this, with Port Drezon caught in the throes of upheaval. History, it seems, is repeating itself. Our country can't afford to lose ever again. We will learn and adapt, or we shall, or our will shall guide us. Unlike the last conflict, we shall strive for solutions that build, bring the least harm in this war. Pacification should not mean oppression. We will ensure fairness in our approach. Oh, I do hope so. The last thing we can afford is a drawn-out conflict. Your speech can bring some comfort to our anxious hearts. The moment was punctuated by the arrival of the members of the Golden Guard. You are all family. I want you by my side. My people, I greet you. We gather amidst the brewing storms, standing strong against the tides of challenge.
The Palaisians dared to challenge us at sea, encroaching upon our rights and attacking our brave sailors, an act of undeniable hostility. Daring to rescue all, we extended our efforts to Palaisian sailors, embodying the true spirit of Rizian heroism. The unprovoked attack on our navy, the sinking of the Arnen Valero, is a clear declaration of war by Pales. the war already raging at sea, we brace for the inevitable clash on land, prepared for the trials ahead. Losing an AN arbitration has shown us that in the face of injustice, our only recourse is to stand up for Rizia. Some nations at the AN have turned their backs on us. I don't know. I don't like any of these options.
Years ago, an attack on me and Zil was an attack on our sovereignty. Now to the south, new aggressors threaten our lands. Each citizen's effort, whether on the battlefield or at home, is a vital thread in the fabric of our victory. Together we are an unbreakable force. United, we will face this challenge and emerge stronger as one Rizia. Or no. In every street, in every home of Rizia, your determination fuels our nation's unyielding spirit against all odds. From the fields to the factories, your contributions fortify the very foundations upon our which our kingdom stands. This land of ours, with its rolling hills and ancient cities, calls for the children to protect its legacy for Rizia, for our future. House Azaro, our warriors led by the steadfast Lucita Azaro and the legendary General Thaddeus march with us into battle. Manas Cezanne and his kin join our ranks, setting aside past differences for the greater good of Rizia. House Doras, our royal lineage, stands unshakable pillar of Rizia, guiding our nation with wisdom and honor. Each house with its storied legacy brings a unique strength to our collective endeavor. Together we are indomitable. As you defend our borders, skies and seas, know that you carry with you the hopes and prayers of every Rizian citizen. Together we stand united as one people, united under one flag, with an unwavering faith in our cause and in each other.
the divisions under House Saison, a blend of modern tactics and forward-thinking leadership, add a dynamic edge to our military's endeavors. In the annals of history, let it be said that it was you, the valiant protectors of Rizia, who turned the tide. Your deeds today will echo as a beacon of hope for generations. Man, this is a long speech. Jeez Louise. The time for diplomacy has passed. Rizia must now assert its might and valor in the face of Palazian aggression. I didn't get the naval base expansion completed. Director of Rizian Intelligence reports that a team of spies has successfully infiltrated Palazian security forces and are waiting for orders. The Directorate proposes a covert operation to sabotage strategic enemy defenses before the invasion begins. Air defenses so we can use our uh, air, air force. Play the tutorial. Massive amounts of voluntary enlistments. Plus three authority, 1500 manpower, plus 250 per turn. Hell yeah! I don't have enough equipment for anything, and I won't have any money to do anything, but... I need more money. Grace supports us. Record numbers at recruitment offices? Cool.
Yay. Operation Tutorial. Okay. All frontline tiles must have a land unit. Is it going to give me a tutorial? Capture all objectives star and hold them. Gain as much territory as possible and thwart enemy attacks to protect it. All right, I'm going to jump in here because, frankly, as I was streaming this, the tutorial was not very helpful in, in me understanding how to fight. Um, I think the warfare mechanics need some work, but basically you want to attack enemy units. Terrain has an impact, so like tanks attacking mountains don't do as well. Mountain troops do particularly well. Uh, Azaro levies are very good on the offensive. They're very good as sort of initial spearheads on offensives. Armored units, very good on attack. Mechanized units, very good in support. Infantry units, good for holding positions if they can dig in, but somewhat vulnerable to armor, especially if they don't have good terrain backing them up. And you want to keep your units on your supply line in order to keep them effective. Naval units can be deployed as well. You can attack one unit into another hex, but you can also have adjacent units choose to support those units uh, to help them fight more effectively. So like if you select a unit and then select an enemy hex that's adjacent, that will start an attack. You'll get a little red progress bar that if it's red, it means the enemy's win, gonna win that battle. If it's green, blue, it means you're gonna win that battle. Um, and if the bar is completely filled up one way or the other, then you will either overrun the enemy and have the option of destroying them or destroy them or take the objective if it's a city. Um, additionally, uh, you can adjust those odds by supporting units. So if you select one unit, select a unit in an adjacent hex uh, to attack. If it's in red, but then you have another one of your units next to, to your attacking unit, you actually just have that unit like click on, on the unit that your troop is attacking from, and they'll support the attack, and they'll lend their strength to the attack as well. One other thing that really doesn't come up in the tutorial all that much is naval support from warships, not from subs, but from warships, can be incredibly effective. Uh, so if you're by the coast and you can win control of the, the sea lane there, put a warship along the coast and they can bombard the enemy and give you a huge advantage. You can also bomb units to sort of interdict things. If the enemy is supporting an attack and you attack the supporting unit, you can also you know, prevent them from being able to support. Um, you have a limited amount of movements you can make in a given turn. Uh, I believe my side only has four action points, which basically means I can do four actions of any of my units. I can fortify a unit by having a, you know, clicking on the unit that's already in a hex, and then you click on that same hex and they'll dig in. Uh, but that costs an action point. Moving unit costs an action point. Attacking with a unit costs an action point. So you're really limited in, in what you can do, um, and that includes like trying to support your units. If the enemy's attacking you and your odds don't look good, you can have an adjacent unit of yours uh, do the support mechanic as well, and then you can support that attack. Um, additionally, you do have a certain number of marine units that can land in any sort of open, non-controlled enemy hex. Um, so you can like land behind their lines in theory if you can get the naval support to do it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of a real high level, quick and dirty version of this. Watching the rest of this tutorial, frankly, probably not worthwhile. We're going to edit it out just because it, I, it was very confusing and it didn't really explain what was going on. And I only learned what I learned essentially through the School of Hard Knocks and through fighting the actual war and doing very poorly uh, in some of the initial phases. But we got better as it went on. Um, but yeah, so the warfare will be a bit rough, a little bit of me being frustrated, but this is a first look. So just being totally transparent, guys, this wasn't the prettiest playthrough. I think what I may do, if this sounds interesting to you and leave your thoughts below, is I may speed run this thing because I've already completed the series by now or the, the streams by now. But I may speed run through a second playthrough, come back to the war mechanics, and make a tutorial out of it that actually is, like, well thought out and put together and sort of explains how to fight and maybe how to win. Um, but let me know if that's something that's interesting for you. Anyway, guys, that's enough of this sort of side tangent. 
uh, back to the stream. Hey, we sank their battleship. Drove back their armored division. Destroyed that armored division. Destroyed that mechanized division. All that's left is their navy's sub. Okay. I'm assuming the next turn is the war. All right, we're about to be in major economic strife. Negative four. Is the economy going to collapse before we actually get to fight? <laughs> That tutorial was like, just figure it out. Just click around and see what happens. Which is a little bit frustrating. All right, so we got our second. Oh, it didn't deploy? They're still in training? I was gonna say we got our second subdivision, but apparently not. The uh, naval base is done, I think. I don't have enough equipment. I don't have any money to buy equipment. Whatever, it won't be ready by the time the war, start, war starts. So let's start with Operation Golden Shield, Phase 1. Much larger battlefield than previously. Jeez. Okay. They have a lot more mechanized forces than we do. This is going to be ugly. Okay. Um... Specialize on the offensive, so we'll have these guys deploy in the south. Our mountain troops are best deployed down here as well. I'm assuming you put infantry divisions in the forts. Put a support unit down here to support the drive in the south. We'll also put an armored division down there to support the drive in the south. These are all frontline hexes. Okay.
support duties, eh? We can only deploy our ships in the south, so... Put our subs up front with our warships behind. No, I'm not sure about my initial deployment, but we'll see. Looks like we get to move first. Uh, these guys are already in fortifications, so I, I mean, it might make sense for them to dig in, but I also... Uh, we have one airstrike available. I'm worried about their, if they may launch an offensive in the north, but if we can break them in the south and we can drive to this coast here near Marquez we can cut their supply lines which I assume will matter okay so the entire turn is taken up by breaking through this enemy unit in the south it'll have support units to the north but our mechanized and armored support should be sufficient so let's see what happens here. Alright, we drove them back. Uh, the enemy is attacking. Those don't look like good odds. Rizian sabotage in Palazian ranks. A spectacular covert operation within the fortified enemy territories west of Zix results in the crippling of a crucial enemy division. Our intelligence operatives not only sabotaged a key communication relay, but also an instigated defections amongst several officers. Glorious Rixia! Alright, so the enemy's attacking along these points. So we can choose to have our troops support, I think. Did it make a difference? I wish you weren't locked into... Like, I wish it told you what to expect. So we should stop at least one of their drives down here. Maybe I should have dug in on those spots, I don't know. Alright, so they destroyed one of my frontline divisions there. And a second division. They failed in their attack on that other position. Oh, nice. Looks like we're going to win easily on that position. So Zix is the objective and so is Ar Arkies. How do you pronounce that? So the only places they're going to attack right now and win... Do I not get any more air units? It's just the one attack? Great. 
So they bombed my troops and drove me back anyway? And then destroyed them. Great. This war is not going well. Yeah, losing pretty badly so far. I'm going to lose. They drove back those Azor elites. I think they just destroyed that armored division of mine. It seems like they've got way more movement points than I do, which they do have more units, but... is going to be overrun because they can't do anything with these troops up here in the north. Unable to move. Unable to do anything with all these guys. Hey, at least we sank one of their warships. His relentless war warriors down on the town of Lithuania was oh, okay. Yeah, I'm fine with giving him supplies because I don't have anything to. So how can they not do more than that? God, there's nothing I can do. I get four movement points and I just absolutely get crushed. We're getting completely overrun.
They sank my submarine with coastal artillery. I do support my position, but you won't, that expends four action points. Every time you support it, expends four action points. I have no reinforcements to come to my aid. In theory, these guys are cut off now, right? I don't, I don't know if that matters, but. In theory, we've cut all these boys off up here. I don't know how much that will matter. We'll see. It said that we were going to win that battle up there in the north. So does it not penalize them for being surrounded? We just destroyed two of their divisions in the south. That's nice. At least. I need to do something in the north, though. So they're going to attack this unit, these Saison levies. It's a one plus one, one health. What is this? Two, four, six, two, one, four, four, two. I don't think I can attack these guys successfully. That made no difference in defending this fort. Great. Fort Ailes is the linchpin of our border defense. Launch a counterattack and retake the fort. I don't. I mean, the manpower doesn't matter because I I can't really purchase any new units right now. And they've got me surrounded again in the south. Also, what is this guy doing back here? How are they supplying this guy? There's no... What did I spend those points for if I can't counterattack it?
So the war's not going well. Large Marine Corps. Great. I've got plenty of authority, but no ability to do anything. I have no money. I'll get a new sub next turn to replace the one I lost, I guess. House of Delegates visit. Oh, this isn't good music. Okay, what's she gonna do? Thanks, Manus. It's not an all-out attack. They attacked us! What's he proposing now? War profits tax on those very same businesses and industries that are working to equip the troops. Okay. Undeniable fact, the war is a source of suffering for many and an enormous financial windfall for the elite few. What we're proposing is a move toward equality, or equity. It's not fair that our military operations will put a strain on social welfare while fattening the pockets of our weapons executives. Buy war bonds! That was probably stupid. I shouldn't have done that. I should have ignored it.
Okay. Could I have just chosen not to go to this? Shouldn't Zill citizens decide who governs them? That would be a funny approach. It's irrelevant anyway. There's no telling when we'll get Zill back. Isn't it? I mean, isn't this the right answer? I don't like option two. My subjects love me. End of conversation. No, I don't want to speak. I'm not going to murder Cezanne. money to fund them. God damn it. Why is it not letting me... It won't let me click this! Alright everybody, that's going to do it for this episode. Sorry it was a little bit quieter on my end. Maybe not as much value provided there from explaining things, but I was just a little bit overwhelmed with the war mechanic. We'll see about maybe doing sort of a speed run and then revisiting this. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.